Hey guys, and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build, speed building video. Um, today we're doing something a little bit different, um, because I'm making a more of a, like a period house. Uh, this is a Victorian style house, which is kind of semi-renovated, um, and by that I mean like, the exterior features are obviously very Victorian, it's got like original windows and stuff like that. Um, but on the inside, like, the appliances and stuff have been updated, as have like the bedrooms and things, but some of the like walls and flooring is still quite um, old fashioned. And also, I'm gonna give them a pool in the back garden because who doesn't want a pool? Um, yeah, so at the moment, I'm building like the structure. Um, and I'm having a bit of an issue with the. Uh, I have quite a bit of an issue with the kind of roofing over this front kind of terracey bit. Um, and the, it took me a very long time to get this right how I wanted it. So I have cut some of it out um, to save you guys from just like watching me have just like a bit of a like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing moment. Um, but yeah, I really wanted there to be like this big, this kind of like front porch kind of area um, with like a nice, you know, roofing over it. Um, I was looking at some like reference images when I was building this uh, for kind of the style of house and how it should look. And a lot of them had this kind of front porch area with, you know, nice roof over the top. Um, obviously I'm using the spandrels and everything. This is a very kind of extravagant um, kind of house. So I loved using all the Kind of tools that we got see here here this, this the little like how i was like how do i roof this nicely how and then we are uh, we've jumped forward a bit and realized that i needed to cut out a bit of the um decking so that things work nicely um and it also that also gives the front of the house a little bit more like shape and a bit, uh, and it just becomes a bit more defined and all that kind of stuff um so yeah lovely so there we are front porch bit done moving on to upstairs um, and working out that kind of structure. Um, still messing with roofs. Stop it. Stop messing with roofs. Just keep going. Um, yeah, so in a lot of the uh, images that I looked at, uh, there's this big kind of like tower um, that comes out of the build that's, you know, ends up like a whole level taller than the rest of the build. Uh, so that's what I've got at the front. It's like a big, nice tower. And I do end up like making it useful so it's not just ornamental but I end up with like a little arts room up the top just out of the way which I think is quite nice um and then there's quite a few of these kind of like uh let's say terraces but that's not right what's the word balcony kind of areas um so I've built quite a few of those some of them aren't actually accessible but you know if you wanted to make them accessible it's like really easy to do you know just add a door out of a room um you know nice and simple uh yeah and then i was thinking yes uh adding a bit of a roof up the top um and then yeah more roofing more roofs lots of roofs in this build um i love it i've put this in um this lot in willow creek by the way uh in the area with the goths and the other couple of houses and i think actually it fits really well because it's kind of that old money kind of vibe to it oh i love it i had so much fun doing this build and then finding all the right windows um i think i kind of used mm, three or four different windows throughout the whole build maybe more actually i'm not totally sure i did this build a couple of days ago um you know, it's wonderful. I love it. Um, window search. Yeah, I use uh, those windows a lot around the house because it makes it, you know, they just quite look quite old and quite grand and it definitely gives the house the vibe I was definitely going for. Wonderful. Um, yeah, and the front door I end up making pink because uh, one of the images I saw actually had like pink siding all the way around the house and I do try that later but it does end up looking quite barbie so I like tone it down a bit but keep the pink in the doors um, and then we've got little window like baskets not baskets um, kind of flower troughs on the windows which I think makes it really cute um, yeah lovely yeah love it 
Um, adding windows around the house. Um, do I do anything else at the moment? Stairs. Right, just trying to work out where the how the internal structure would work of this house. Obviously, because you want a nice big kind of living space and kitchen and dining room, and then all the uh, bedrooms and stuff. You don't want to make a house like this, and then I only have like two bedrooms. So it's trying really hard to make this like actually structurally work, and then making sure that I had like a space to get up into that kind of loft uh, art room that I'm that it's going to be. Um, so here we go, portioning everything off upstairs, uh, portioning off I think about three bedrooms, a study area, a bathroom, and like a little outdoor porch there. Porch, no, not porch, balcony. Um, also to just give that back face of the house a bit more um, detail, because you know, you don't want too many sides of the house just to be like straight and flat and it just starts looking a bit like samey. I've used the same door as the front door uh, just because I think it's really cute and it ties in that kind of pink heritage and the fact that you know Victorian houses could be painted in kind of like pastel-y colours and it just oh, it's just great. I actually really love this house. Um, I need to make some kind of like old money family to move into it. It's brilliant. Um, yeah, I'm just getting windows all around. I might have gone a little bit window heavy, as I tend to do. Um, I think that pause was me just like looking at some reference images, being like, "What do I do?" Because um, whenever I build something that I'm not totally sure about, I always look at reference images, um, so especially like this kind of build, this older kind of build that I'm not quite sure about, or modern builds. Actually, I'm not very good at making those up. Um, which is why any kind of modern build from me just looks a bit weird. Uh, I am trying to get better, but there you go. Uh, portioning off downstairs into a couple of small bathrooms, dining uh, room, and like a kitchen with like a breakfast area in it. And the rest of the space is going to be used as like living space. Um, yeah. Window search. Window search took me forever trying to find the right windows for the right rooms. Because it's like, how much of a window do you want in a bathroom? Like, and and getting that window right for the kind of period of the house. Um, it took me a little, a little work in. But yeah, uh, roofing. Changing the roof colour. Because uh, yeah, the roofs were definitely kind of really like dark. And then I tried to put like a little, a little ornament thing on the top of that big tower, um, just to you know make it a little bit more interesting. Lovely. Here's the bar the Barbie pink. The house is gonna go really Barbie pink. And then I looked at it and thought, that's too pink. <laughs> I tried to make it go kind of blue lilac color, and then thought, well that doesn't really go with pink, so it's just gone this kind of cream uh, siding color, which you know works quite well and. I think makes the house fit into uh, the kind of neighbourhood that it's situated in. I think that works quite nicely. Um, and yeah, I'm just making sure the foundation's right and everything. And I think we're about to move the house. Yeah, move the house so it's centred on the lot a bit so that we can have like a back garden area and kind of a bit of a front garden. Um, and then making it a bit private with a hedge. A hedge. I thought a hedge would be nicer than a... Um, bit of fence and it just kind of shows that kind of like what I think of kind of like old money you know you can afford to have a gardener come and do the hedges like you know like once a week and like keep everything tr trim and proper and all that kind of stuff and of course fitting a mailbox and uh, I do put a bin outside uh, but not just yet ends up going on the uh, decking the the kind of patio Oh, I'm rubbish with names names of like patios, balconies and ver verandas, verandas? Mm. I suppose you could call it a veranda I suppose. And getting some uh, foliage and stuff outside. I spent like a really long time on the exterior of this house and making this house like look nice. So I'm really hoping that you guys like it. If you do, please leave me comments saying that you've, you know, you like how this looks or the colours I've used or anything like that. It's so much appreciated. Um, appreciated <clears throat> and to learn to speak properly come on Mary um, but yeah just trying to add some foliage around the base of the trees um, which looks really nice and onto the back garden so this is one of the like you know renovated features obviously the original house you know 
back in the Victorian era wouldn't have a pool outside but I thought you know what kind of wealthy family doesn't has such a gorgeous house and then doesn't have a pool and you know make it that much more luxurious rose petals rose petals around it's beautiful uh and make sure there's some lighting outside otherwise that'd be dark as anything during the night time and some little you know lilies lily lily pads and stuff so cute um I was going to try and add something else and then decided against it and then thought uh, let's put some ivy up the back of the house because otherwise that bit is quite uh, kind of bland and the fact that there was no windows kind of really like like almost like shouts at you going hey I have no windows uh, so covering that up with ivy I think works quite nicely and then adding some bushes around the bottom to kind of hide the um, foundations a bit adding some you know little bits here and there make the house look you know more believable and like it is like an actual Victorian home it's lovely adding the patio uh, stuff for, um, flooring uh, use the one from the jungle adventures just because it's so beautiful um, and I think it actually fits really nicely within this home uh, and I think we're onto the inside now yes um, so I wanted the kitchen, like the flow from the kitchen to the dining room to the living room, kind of to be very open. So used archways, and then I wanted, I decided that I wanted this. This is the point where I was like, okay, it's not going to be like fully renovated on the inside. We're still going to have those kind of old, um, like wood paneling with kind of that older uh, wallpaper in it as well, because you know, if you have a house like this, then maybe you don't want to fully renovate it. Obviously, you're going to put. A whole bunch of um you know new equipment and stuff like that in it um and this is <laughs> lovely kitchen making those um that big kind of checkerboard uh tile uh it's it's, it's so nice uh and then i've got even got a little bathroom coming off the kitchen as well so this house ends up with like three bedrooms and three bathrooms um and i think it just looks lovely da -da 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 -da, painting walls um what am i doing now oh adding some nice lights outside lovely ah and here i found these um oh, what are they wall lights they're also called something else i can't remember and then just doing a, like a general light up so that when i'm furnishing and adding things in i can actually see what on earth is going on um hmm, excuse me Onto the kitchen. Um, the I'm keeping it them kind of traditional with the um, uh, counters and stuff that I'm using, uh, but then having like you know nice new appliances that's like look quite funky and quite good. And then I want to have this big. Um, I was trying to find the right uh, kept big cabinet, and then I thought that looked a bit too tall. Um, I was having a bit of a play, being like. Mm, because that little cabinet doesn't come out quite as far so I was like eh. but oh well I think that still looks quite nice and it actually gave me somewhere to put the uh, smoke alarm just on top of it so obviously I always put a smoke alarm in my house because I'm always worried that like if I don't then the sims are gonna like burn the house down um I was trying to put the tea selection in a nice place at the back and it kind of wasn't having it I get it in the <laughs> in a nice place at the end I don't I don't know how long this takes sped up it took me quite a while to do it properly there we are there we are nicely behind the coffee machine just where you need it um a bread bin just a couple of other bits and bobs like a fruit bowl uh to make this house just look a bit more like homely um but you know keeping it qu still quite classical with you know the kind of chairs that i'm using and whatnot and don't forget the bin if you heard that, that noise, that was me hitting my knuckle on the table. That hurt, but hey ho. Um, see, because I'm, I'm gesturing a lot with my hands as I talk, as I generally do. And obviously, you guys don't see, but I'm still doing it and hit my finger. Mm, bit of a muppet move, but there we go. Um, yeah, having like a, like a nice breakfast kind of table. It's for like kind of quite informal meals. Uh, if you're gonna have like a quick snack or like a bit of lunch, then you'd probably eat in in the kitchen whether that's at the island or by the little table up to you adding some kind of more traditional lights and stuff as well um just to make this house seem like 
it's not been quite pulled all the way into the 21st century it's still got some of its oldie worldy kind of features in it and stuff like that um as well as sconces that's what they're called they're called sconces along with the sconces there we go i'm gonna forget that word in about five minutes um oh, there we go i've turned the grid off i always forget to turn the grid off i'm not sure whether you guys prefer the grid on or off um i definitely prefer it on when i'm building but then like like to turn it off when i'm not did i just do that did i just turn like move i thought i already had like move objects on hmm. anyway that's fine uh, <laughs> oops but yeah i when i'm furnishing i do quite often use move objects um just because it makes it a bit easier to actually do things um there's flowers and things on the table i think in it, yeah there we go i've removed the old um the 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 plant the kind of tree thing from the kitchen and added like a radiator in there i think the idea was i was going to use radiators around the house i think that's the only one i actually ended up putting in but it's quite cute and having some like little chests and trunks by the front door so you know if there's anything you need to grab it's just there um yeah very cute i think and get about to do the living room i think yes um ah i decided i had to have a like a grand piano i never use a grand piano kind of because none of my builds are ever big enough but i thought in this victorian kind of style house i i had to have a grand piano and a fireplace you know if i don't put them here where am i gonna put them um so yeah it ended up going in there and I think it looks really lovely. Um, there isn't a TV in this house because if you lived in something this this grand and this, you know, and grand and I don't know what I was going to go with there, uh, this grand house, then maybe, you know, TV isn't your main priority. There are a couple of computers upstairs, so it's not like, you know, you're cut off from modern life, but, uh, you know, you don't always need a TV, you know. Yeah don't always need a TV um, and I was trying to find some plants and stuff to put either side of the fireplace I think I go with these two um, just because it looked a bit bare and I couldn't put a lamp next to it so I was like mm, what do we do doing that uh, and then I wanted to get like a bookcase and a chair next to the piano um, just very cute it took me a while I was trying to get it to move at whatever angle I wanted and I was trying to remember what the free rotation thing was Basically, you have to be in the Sims 3 camera, and then you hold hold Alt, and then you click and drag um, the chair around to get it into the right uh, position you'd like. It took me a while to figure that out, slash <laughs> Google it again, because um, I don't use it very often, but certain times, you know, just like that chair, I don't want that to be in a certain, you know, in a set location. Um, and the thing is that I don't, I'm not, like, that much of a fan of the sims 3 sims 3 camera just because i got so used to the sims 4 camera so it's like oh i have to like toggle back and forth um you know when i want to spin something at a weird angle versus the rest of the time i'm building <laughs> yeah not my not my thing i'm making sure i put curtains in um i think i'm trying to put curtains all the way around this house but i don't know whether i remember to do that in the kitchen or not so don't oh yes i did um so I, I spotted it as it went around uh adding a few more sconces and kitting out the bathroom so this bathroom is a fully fitted bathroom it's got a uh shower toilet and a big sink unit um and of course a bit of uh, loo roll and towels and things uh the only thing I don't like about higher height walls than the regular height walls um, is that you can't uh, like see in them properly when the walls are up to put things on the walls like the toilet paper and stuff so you end up doing this kind of like awkward ugh, peering over um, which is a bit rubbish really but hey ho um, that's all fine Ooh. Hmm. yeah just mm, adding it in and then changing the lights around so the more kind of traditional lights um yeah i think downstairs definitely hasn't been touched whereas upstairs is the bit that's kind of been renovated more obviously in the kitchen there's like newer appliances and things like that but i was gonna do this 
rug runner and then decided that looked too old and vampiric obviously quite vampiric because it's from that um the vampires pack but decided against it i was also potentially going to do this l shape and then was like nah nah don't need it uh kidding out the smaller bathroom that comes off the kitchen with just you know a toilet and a sink that's all you need um and then adding sconces in there for the light. I thought that was quite nice. You don't always want a wall light, especially in such a small room. You can kind of make it look a bit strange. Um, and here we've got a full table. This seats six sims. You could potentially squeeze eight on, but that would, your sims might have a bit of an issue getting around it. Um, uh, but yeah, this sim, this house currently could sleep five sims. I think I have two double bedrooms upstairs and a single bedroom so there's plenty of seats you know if someone brought someone home from school or something you know they could stay, they could stay for dinner and of course if you're having a big entertaining uh, affair then there's lots of seating areas in the kitchen um so you know plenty of seats in this house uh, trying to put something on the um patio veranda area outside so it wasn't quite so, so bare and trying to fill in spaces upstairs so uh, as you see the bedrooms don't have the old siding uh, wooden panelling on them they've just got you know nice bits bright bits of colour upstairs upstairs is quite blank uh, for the art studio and then continuing the flooring on the uh, kind of uh, landing and in the study and the arts room upstairs um and i thought it'd be really nice to have this in this um on that little patio uh balcony area just have like a little meditation stall we could sit there and just look at you and just relax because why not if you have such a nice house you want to like spend your time enjoying the area you're situated in you know if you're in the nice bit of town that's what i do um yeah, kidding out the bathrooms. This has both a shower and a bath because uh, sometimes a shower just won't do. You need to soak in those bubbles and just let your troubles melt away. Um, <laughs> yeah, and on to the single bedroom. This is, uh, in my head, it was designed for like a kid, like a child or like a teenager um, who kind of likes vibrant colour. That red is quite, uh, ready orange is quite vibrant. Uh, I love it. And then putting some uh, like stickers on the wall and stuff for like are they the oh what are they called void critters and I think they might be void critters I'm not sure um, I never really play with a void critter machine it must be said uh, and then some cats and dogs because why not they're cute and a rug and they've got a desk I think I give them like the little, little journal yeah you know nicely kitted out room um lovely this is what i have in mind for the master bedroom you could make the master bedroom the uh green room next to it but i think this one you know screams master bedroom to me at least um nice big bed side tables flowers candles oh i do love myself a candle mm. wonderful things candles and fairy lights they're just super cute um I don't think I can keep that chandelier light thing. It doesn't emit much light and uh, doesn't really fit where it is because it's kind of hung over the ottoman but kind of not. I was doing very matchy matchy at this point uh, which I think <laughs> I was trying to match the colours and then I was like hmm well, it doesn't really match so I kind of decide not to match have some kind of more grey um, white things and then you've got you know so it's cut you've got a couple of tones within the bedroom um, which I think works quite nicely um, yeah there we go different light scale down that light and what do I put over the top ah. oh yeah just a little chandelier um nice pretty gotta have a rug as well I was gonna layer rugs but they don't layer very well and then it just looked a bit dull and a bit rubbish uh, so there we go just like that and then some paintings some pictures on the wall um, 
I do love putting some pictures on the wall. Just beautiful. Beautiful. Hmm. Scaling down the lights um, around there. And I'm just going to put. Oh, yes, I ended up putting the um, kind of candelabra uh, kind of thing from Jungle Adventure there. And I was trying to find some kind of plants to put on the wall. Just things to like make the corridor a bit more full without like cluttering it, you know. So wall hangings and pictures and stuff like that. On to the final bedroom. I ended up putting that mirror in that kind of one tile extension kind of area. Not sure whether it totally works there or not, but why not? Why not? Um, if you don't like that, then obviously you could just like close that uh, little one tile area off, or you could put something else in there. Um, probably move the desk around, the bed around, and put a desk, like a one tile desk, in there if you wanted. Um, but I end up using this wardrobe, and the and the desk goes next to it. Doodaloo. Um, yes. Tie the blue in uh, from the bed with that chair. Um, obviously, you might be thinking maybe you should have had blue on the walls, but I think the blue and green go quite nicely together, and it means means the room isn't too matchy matchy. Um, at the moment, I have a thing against being too, you know, matchy matchy. It's just it's not the greatest look if you match everything together. Things have to go, but they don't have to be matched um and onto the office space and first thing i did was put a easel there and i was like wait no i'm having a i'm having an arts room upstairs why have i put easels there um but yeah so it's just like a nice little art studio just in the loft you know maybe maybe the you know i don't know maybe one of the sims is really into it and you know if they want their own little studio space it's out of the way no one can interfere you know so if you want to paint at like 3 a.m., they're more than welcome to. They're out of everyone's hair. Um, yeah, adding a nice desk um, with a computer and a lamp. Uh, I was thinking to put a key, putting a keyboard in there, but then I thought, you know, you've got the piano downstairs. You don't really need another keyboard. Um, a bookcase, the same one as the one that's downstairs. And I think I put like a ottoman in there and stuff. You got a little um. Uh, filing cabinet because you know where are all your important papers gonna go you know if, if you ha if you own this house you might have a business you might have special documents and I just you know I think of things like this I think that you know the person that owned this house was a business owner and they need like a special like s secret like safe kind of thing um, Ottoman more things like that and I think we're about done into the screenshots woohoo um, so here we go starting with the exterior screenshots i love this house it looks so pretty oh it just looks so beautiful and i think it fits nicely into its neighborhood as i have said a couple of times before um obviously obviously this house is available for download on the gallery um there's also a link down below to for you to get it or you just search for Mesa sheep games on the gallery and it will come up or you can search for the hashtag Mesa sheep um multiple ways to find it but there we go uh I think this house looks really nice. Um, I wish we could change the ceiling colour because the white against that kind of dark panelling doesn't really work, but there we are. Nice, lovely screenshots and ones for upstairs. Um, oh, look at that view. It's so pretty. It's such a good view. And lovely bedrooms. Obviously, very biased. It's my build. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Please leave a like, comment, uh, if you've enjoyed it, you know, subscribe if you're new, ring the bell so you get notifications from any time I post a video. Not all the time, so you're not going to be inundated with, the, you know, notifications, don't worry. And yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed and I will see you guys later. Bye!